Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again and I'm going back to an old school colour pairing for me. Um, this is one of the cards I've been thinking about for a while that came from Battle of Baldur's Gate and you probably already know it because you're here watching the video. So, without further ado, here's Nera, Wild Mage, 4 blue and red for a 2-7. Yeah. But whenever you cast a spell, you may put it you may, remember the word may is in this sentence, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put all the revealed cards not cast this way onto the bottom of your library in a random order. You get to trigger it once a turn. Yeah, this is fun. This is like complete chaos. You don't know what you're going to do. Nine times out of ten, I'm just going to go, yeah, I'm going to put it on the bottom and see what I get and just have some fun with it. So it's kind of my take on a more... Hmm, slightly more unserious deck. So, what does the deck list look like? It's right here for your enjoyment right now. So, as usual for one of my videos, quick flick through the lands. Um, most of the blue-red lands I own are in here. I have included Field of the Dead because we've got a lot of different lands in here. Um, we've got Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage. We've got Mariko, um, Path of Ancestry, Reliquary Tower, which you would expect from me by now, I hope. Temple of the False God, Volatile Field. Basically anything that produces red or blue mana is in the deck. And a couple of other bits and pieces, including Aventus Fair, because we do have a lot, and I mean a lot, of artifacts in this deck. Um, and I'll come on to why in a minute. But let's just go through it. So the ramp side of things... I've gone with Lotus Blue, Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, Jeweled Lotus, because this is quite expensive. And yes, it is two colours, uh, but yeah, it does help. Mana Crypt, uh, Mana Vault, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Felwar Stone, Chromatic Lanterns here, Coalition Relic, Skyclave Relic, and the Celestus. I want to make sure I'm getting the mana, um, because we do want to be casting stuff as quickly as we can. So this is really heavy on the mana. Now, obviously, if you're playing this in real life and you don't own all these cards... Yeah, you can go and play some of the other things. You can go and play the diamonds, for example. The blue and red diamonds are very good. Um, signets, all the rest of it. You can just change it around. But I'm playing this because this is my online one. And this is something I really want to try and make work on here as far as possible. So that's kind of the ramp side of it. Um, we've got a low creature camp. We've only got 10 creatures in the deck, just so we're clear of it. We've got 52 other things. And the other things are quite fun. So the first thing that's quite fun is Wheel of Fate. Went with this, um, yep, I'll quite happily discard my hand and go and get everything back again. We've got Brainstorm in here, we've got Ponder, we've got Preordain, we've got Serum Visions, just so we can do the whole rampage, you know, card draw, scribe, look at the top of the libraries, get on with it. Um, Lightning Bolt for a bit of early removal, but has a significant effect later in the game. And then we've gone to the twos, we've got Cyclonic Rift, just to control the board a bit early on. Um, then we've got Counterspell Mana Drain, it's a red deck, so there's Dockside, as you're probably expecting to see. I've chucked in Jorah, Aegis Inventor, because we have got so many artifacts in this deck. This is quite a nice, easy way of getting them to play for three if we need to. Um, and the other thing is you can also put things like Lotus Bloom in your hand off yet. You know, instead of having to spend it, Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, you can just put them into play. Um, so it's quite a nice point from that point of view. I have got Isaac Signet in here. I missed that out earlier. Swift Foot Boots is here just to protect Nera. Um, that's the only reason Swift Foot's in here. Then we've got Artifice's Epiphany, just so we can draw a couple of cards, because there shouldn't be any point in us casting this if we don't control at least one of the artifacts I've just gone through, and I expect we will do. Propaganda keeps us alive a little bit longer, and stops everything attacking unless someone's got a lot of spare mana. Chaos Warps, so we can just get rid of an annoying thing if we need to. Um, Fever Division is one of our mini... Oh, sorry, I've got really itchy nose I'm doing this one. Um... Fever Divisions is one of our nice little additional win cards. Yes, it does help our opponents out by letting them draw cards. But if they've got four more on hand, they're going to get shocked at the end of their turn. So, you know, I thought it was good fun. Royal Sinians is one of the few Planeswalkers in the deck. This is here just so we can do the plus one draw card and discard a card. I am not worried. Notice I haven't got Elixir of Immortality in here. This may be a mistake in this deck, just so we're clear of it. I know you see Elixir in a lot of my decks, but I think this one's going to be fast enough that we won't need it with a bit of luck. Um, the rest of it's all the ramp stuff already mentioned. And then we've got Behold the Multiverse, so we can do the whole full tells, scry and exile and draw two. Teferi's Ageless Insight, so we can keep drawing those cards as we draw stuff. Um, Thopter to Spy Network, so we get some flying blockers, and hopefully this will be another backup win condition. Big Scores in, draw the cards, get some treasure tokens. 
Trove of Temptation is a bit of a risky card. I quite like this card, but it's a little bit of a risk. Um, you do get the treasure token at the end of your end step, which is quite nice, but you are going to get hit. So this may be the shakiest card in the deck. You may want to take this out if you're not comfortable doing that, but I want to try this out because it's going to be a little bit chaotic in this deck because of, you know, it's wild. Wild mage. Got to have a bit of chaos somewhere. Speaking of chaos, Atushi, the Blazing Skull. Um, it's mainly for the treasure, but, you know, it's a nice 4-4 flyer in the air that people find hard to deal with sometimes. Defiler of Instinct gets those red permanent spells cast and you get to do all the pinging you want to do so hence why that's here but it does also help because we want to be able to cast our stuff as soon as we can unexpected windfall is another version of um big school just to get the treasure in the cards yes we have to discard something but that's where it is and visions of phyrexia i quite like this exile the top card at the beginning of our up, um, upkeep and you may play that card this turn so it's like an additional card draw for us but if you don't play it you get a power stone now there's not a lot of use for power stones in here but i figured the extra draw would be quite good with visions so hence why it's appearing Galazeth, because we have quite a few um, treasures that are coming into play, and it does give us the ability to tap all our artifacts to cast instants and sorceries. Like Swift Foot Boots, for instance. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to pay the um, extra mana for these at Signet. You can just tap it when this is in play. So, you know, it has its benefits. Mizix, the Ma is Magnus, is also here. Um, we like having experience counters and as long as we can keep this in play and it's one of the reasons we've got swift foot boots in here um, is to keep it alive to make our instance of sorceries cheaper of which we have a lot Ral Zerix, the other planeswalker in the one of the other planeswalkers in the deck um, tap target permanent untap another thing psh, lightning bolt something for the minus two or flip the five coins if you can get up to the minus seven to get all those couple of extra turns that might win you the game storm the vaults also here um at the beginning of your end step, if you control five or more artifacts, transform it, and you basically get the wonderful world of tapping this for blue mana for each artifact you control. Hmm. Five artifacts, yeah, probably not much of an issue in this deck, I am hoping. Hence why it's here. The other defiler's in as well, mainly because this flies, not so much for the um, pay the blue permanent spell, but you know, if you get the odd card draw off it, all well and good by me. Temple Manipulation, so we take an extra turn and hopefully win the game with the extra turn. And the Possibility Storm. I said it was kind of a wild deck. You've got to have Possibility Storm if you're going to play something even slightly chaotic or slightly wild, hence why it's here. A little bit more board control in the f form of Battle of the Frost and Fire. Um, hopefully you'll get this off and still have some nice spells to cast at a 5 mana value or more the next when it goes off to the level 3. But, you know, just the level 1 and dealing 4 to everything that's not a giant um, is very good. Shark Typhoon gives us a lot of creatures we can get out to play early enough, you know, with all our spells, you know, even if they're baby sharks at 1, you know, brother sharks, mama sharks, daddy sharks. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to sing baby shark, I promise. Um, but, you know, you might as well have it. And if you're going to play a blue deck where you go having his spells of any form or other, having this in to get those extra creatures really does help. Consecrate Sphinx to help us draw more when an opponent draws. And then we get to the real crux of the game, which is what we're trying to do. Because don't forget, when we're casting these early spells down here, we want to be hopefully hitting some of the big stuff up this end. So the first one we want to try and hit off Nahiri after we've cast a few things is Minus Desire, just for the Storm ability. Sunbird's Invocation as well we want to hit um, to get to reveal those cards, cast the spells with a mana value X or less, or put it in your hand, you know, um, as it may be. You may cast a spell with mana value X or less among them with the cards revealed as well without paying its mana cost. Put the rest at the bottom of your library. It does get you through a mana ramp of... Um, Landlocked as well, so bear that in mind. You don't get to put it in your hand. Arcane Bombardment. Yep, bit of chaos. With all the things you're going to be casting early, having this thing here with a load of stuff under it, and hopefully some way you to activate it in your opponent's turn with an instant or something, it'd be really good. Eltide, just to go you can nick your stuff off your opponent's deck and cause a bit more chaos and cast their spells, which is always fun. Inferno of Star Mounts. Yes, this was a deck earlier in the week. I did a whole deck tech on, but I decided to play it in here because, you know, I do need another way to win the game eventually. And having this come into play and hopefully pumping it up does tend to get us there because, you know, it'd be good. Thousand Year Storm. I played this in standard. I had a whole deck built around this in standard. It wasn't very good, but I had a lot of fun with it. So I'm trying it out against here. Like I say, it's a lot of instants and sorceries in the deck. Hopefully 
that will mean we'll get to make some more copies of things as things go along. It's always good. Yeah. One of the things we would like to really copy with it is Brass's Bounty if we can. All those extra treasure tokens would be really good. Likewise, Mines Dilation really helps us out. Um, they get to exile the top card of the library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. So if you cast a spell, I'll have your next spell. I was a something useful yeah damnation here you go. i'll cast damnation right wipe the board off for example it's a bit of fun you do get a bit of a target on your head when mine's dilation comes out but that's the way it goes but if you can get it for free off neary why not star storm it's a bit more board control i decided to go down this route instead of the blasphemous act route for a change um storm king's thunder is also quite nice because you know we can do this, pay X a million, you know, five or six times, cast Lightning Bolt, seven copies of Lightning Bolt on the stack. Thank you very much. I'm quite happy to do that. And Crackle with Power, not the best thing. I must admit, the X spells aren't the best thing if they end up under Arcane Bombardment. I agree with that. But Crackle with Power, you should be able to do this quite happily, especially if you can flip the Storm the Vault. Five times X damage to each of up to X targets gives you a way to kill your opponents off really easily. But obviously the main thing we want to hit when Neary, when we're casting stuff, is Omniscience because it makes everything else in the deck free. And that's what we want to be doing. And that's why Omniscience is here. Um, plus the fact it's not too difficult to get up to 10 mana to get this down and then just dump everything in your hand and hopefully get there. Um, so yeah, that is my take on Nera. I think it's going to be a bit wild to play. I think it's going to be fun. Um, it's going to be one of two things. It's going to be so absurdly strong that I'm going to get moaned at a lot by the people who watch play me against me on stream, or I'm just going to fall flat on my face and die very rapidly when I play it. But hey, come and find out on stream. And um, yeah, so it's going to be quite interesting to see. But hey, hum, I just thought I'd do this one. But that's my take on Nera. Anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this little deck tech today. I hope you've hit the subscribe button. Help me get my subscriber numbers up a little bit. Tell a friend, you know. You know if you've got a wife at home who doesn't really care about magic, ask them if they've got a YouTube account and they can subscribe to it as well. You know, just help me build the numbers up. I'd appreciate it. But hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you think there's something major I've missed out out of the Nero deck. And I'll be back very soon with some more deck techs. And hopefully you'll be here to watch them. So thanks for coming and having a look at this one. I'll see you soon. I'm out of here. Bye.